I really never have talked about this that much and I'm ready to speak about it. nutrition today we'll be speaking about my journey to wellness and the fact that i was born with a disability and diagnosed with cancer at the same time so we're going to talk about me if you haven't seen my blog post recently i did talk briefly about my journey to wellness and my story and i feel like a youtube video will be make more sense it's something i really don't speak about only spoke about it a couple of times but not in full detail so here we go it's just gonna be so hard for me i was born with left-sided hemorrhagic cerebral palsy it's a condition where it affects brusque cortex it affects that and it affects the way that i move or if I, if I speak and things like that i got lucky because i was only affected on one side of my body i was affected on my left side of my body so my left hand and my left leg were mostly affected so it's hard because throughout my life I've been in and out of hospital, in and out of certain places in my life and it feels surreal and when I was growing up um, I was bullied, not in my primary school because it was a very inclusive and diverse primary school and we only had a couple of dis disabled people in that school. When it came to secondary school, that's when it went hard and I faced verbal bullying, I've not even physical, but I was lucky I did not get physical, but I did face verbal bullying and, okay. Said things like, you're one-legged, can't move around, you're limping, you look like an animal, you look like some wounded animal, you you just are not working like a function my function was off and that's when the word disabled came from me was from that whole experience and it really did taught me a lot of things like it taught me things like that means like i was very hard-hearted about all of it and it was just really tough so i went through that in that time i faced an eating disorder it was called Pika and Pika is an eating disorder where you eat in any edible items so I ate things like tissue paper and paper and toilet paper like something to do with paper I would eat just because I was going over the anxiety and depression I was going through through the bullying itself and when I was facing Pika no one knew I used to go through toilet rolls per day no one knew no one knew. My mum knew somehow that I wasn't feeling well. My um, I was feeling pale. I was feeling more tired. And she realised something was up because there was not enough toilet paper to go around. She saw, like, the things I went to, but I never spoke to anyone because I felt like I, I deserved it in that way because I was disabled. I was disabled. And, yeah, so after that, I come to, came to terms about what... I was more about and I continued to pick up, I continued it for a while and then went to the doctors I was iron deficient because of that particular reason and that I'm vitamin D deficient as well so during that time it was just really tough going through it all and yeah it's just I can't pick it back myself and then later on um, that went through all through my year 11 I started to gain weight, not bother about my wellness, not bother about fitness. I did go to the gym a couple of times, did not work out, my diet wasn't working out, everything like that. And so then what happened was that I went to college. That's when I was recovering from it all. I was submitted to hospital a couple of times because of my blood and loss and because I had suffered very heavy periods at that time. If you girls know you know what things we go through a lot of things so i did face like really heavy periods like i had some for three months in a row and that was a point where it got worse like i was trying to recover from that i was admitted to hospital a couple of times 
trying to see what was the problem with that because it's always a problem within me and at the same time I was diagnosed with deep vein furrowis which is a calf blood clot where you develop it in your calf and that caused me extreme pain alongside my disability and it just piled up all at once I think 2016 was the worst year of my life because I was admitted to hospital like four or five times not knowing what the answers were not knowing anything and that's when I spiraled and I was going into year 11 applying for colleges as well so it was going leading up to that and then when I was going into college it got better the first year because that's when my health went good I was going to the gym well I was eating well I did not lose weight though I did not lose weight I tried so many ways tried to lose weight but it did not happen and then come here to summer school I went to a summer school in Oxford Brookes University thank you Oxford Brookes University for letting me go on the summer school and experiencing university and what it's like for three days I really loved it so I went to the summer school and halfway through it I got a phone call from one of my doctors because since the incidents of me being admitted in 2016 I had to constantly go to the doctors, the gynaecologist and he had to do some biopsies because he saw something was up. So a week before I did a biopsy, I had a whole operation and stuff like that to get this biopsy from my womb and then he called me up and said, Prav you need to come to the hospital on Monday we have the results we can't tell you over the phone because it'd be better if you tell them in person so i was going to the weekend thinking what is up because i never got answers for anything during due to my periods i never got answers never got answers and then i was like what if this is the answer to what was happening so i went on monday i sat down and he told me because I had hyperplasia in the past, hyperplasia is when abnormal endometrial lining cells develop over time and it can cause internal bleeding and things like that. And they said it was a 50% chance I could be diagnosed with endometrial cancer. And as you can tell, I was in the 50%. I got stage 1 endometrial cancer. Yeah. Hard to say. And I was a 17 year old girl coming in not knowing what was up not knowing what was cancer what did it do to your body i saw so many videos about people losing their hair or vomiting because of chemotherapy and even dying from it like i've seen so many scare stories and the fact that i was diagnosed with endometrial cancer shocked me that was the worst day of my life. 23rd of July 2018 was the worst day of my life. It was the worst. My mum was with me. She heard the news. She broke down in tears before I did. And when I saw her cry, that made me cry because I was like, what the hell just happened here? After six years of not knowing what was up with me, we only found out. <laughs> and yeah, so we called my dad over, my dad knew. I saw him cry too and it was so hard to see, see this on my parents and I wish that day was better because the way we reacted wasn't the best. We didn't know what was coming. So I went through three months of chemotherapy drugs they were drugs they were not the ivs they were not anything like that they were just in small tablets have to take half two times a day when i did that i lost hair i lost a bit of hair not too much but i lost a bit of hair i was feeling nausea i was feeling fatigue all the time and now i knew the effects of the chemotherapy but I kept having scans and scans. They were like, it's not shrinking, it's not growing, it's just staying the same. So my next steps were to either continue with the drugs, which would not change. You still have the cancer. It could grow. Like, it has a 70% chance of growing. Or you could remove the womb. You could remove the endometrial cancer from the womb can remove the womb as a whole and as a 17 year old you don't know what is going through your brain i know that the womb is where you reproduce offsprings and everything like that and the thought of being infertile for life can't get pregnant can't have kids naturally that really 
did affect me. It did. I was going to fertility clinics at the age of 17 to think about freezing my egg. I was getting information about surrogacy and adoption at the age of 17 just because I could not get pregnant naturally. And had the surgery done on the 20th of October 2018. That day was tough because I was just going through so many emotions that day saying my cancer will be gone but how about the side effects? How about everything else that comes after that? What was I going to do? Um, sorry. <sighs> sorry about that. During that time, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know. And I was 17. I was one of the youngest to have this and it just really struck down on me like what is my life going to be after this? Since then, I have n no other, I did not get any other conditions other than vitamin D deficiency, which I'm taking right now. But other than that, it was felt like the time to get myself active and go to the gym, doing nutrition, like taking care of myself. People said I had lost weight and that was an encouraging thing because whatever it was I was doing in the past did not help me because of the disabled community not getting enough support nor that some workouts do not help disabled people and what I was doing after my surgery motivated me to keep on going and be grateful for what I was and since then I've gone better I've gone better and then one day when I was coming back from the gym one day I wanted to help people I was like I really wanted to help people because I felt more grateful for what I've done and since then that's when movement started from an idea that I had since my surgery and opened up in December 2019 got so much positive feedback and encouragement and we continue to strive on board with a whole community of disabled people yet to come and I'm talking about this almost one year after I created the brand and seeing how it's gone in almost one year and I'm loving the progress that we're making and we continue to strive forward we do we do and to anyone out there who's feeling like they are not in the top of the world just keep on moving forward that's what i would say to anyone just move on forward and see what life brings you because you never know what someone's going through you need some help you need some support i had that support but i didn't take advantage of it but what I'm saying is that you should take control of it and be grateful. That's something I would say. You don't feel alone. You shouldn't. Like, there's so many things out there that you could help. Just trust me on this process when I say don't give up. If you want to know more about what we do, we have a website linked in the description. Also to all our social medias as well, linked in the description. And... Also, click that subscribe button just right here, just right here. Just click the subscribe button and be notified when we upload because I really want to help people. And we got some amazing videos coming up. So thank you so much for listening, guys. And please subscribe, like, comment, share this video. Share this story of mine because I'm ready to even share this story to anyone. So make sure you share it and... Bring some encouragement to other disabled people. Bring some encouragement to other people with medical conditions. I face both. I face disability and cancer at the same time. And I should, don't want other people to think that. Like I want other people to be encouraged for what they stand for. And yes, yeah, so thank you so much everyone. Take care. Bye.